uh, like I always recommend, I know the the Red Book and, and Young's really crazy tears. Mm-hmm. They're really romantic and all that. Yeah, it's good, but you, you don't really you don't really need that stuff till much later. You know, it's it's better mm-hmm. if you kind of start with this more personal stuff. That's what he recommended anyway. Okay. And there will be the odd person, but it's pro- it's almost certainly not you. But it will be the odd person who who maybe gets these big ideas immediately and they're just sort of they have to give up their personality to it but just don't you don't want to be that person that's a that's a hard person to be and um, but that's sort of it so you go in you face the shadow you you bring up that 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 intensity and then you you look in and you so you open up the the narnia thing and you bring up all that intensity it's like so you open up the doors of the wardrobe of where the dreams come from and out comes a big monster the time you killed someone, the time the the shock happened, all this type of stuff. And you're like, ah, and you start weeping and crying. And suddenly you go from being an adult who's hard and normal and you're a weeping child again. Mm. Exactly where it happened, you're a weeping child saying to yourself, I don't know what's happening to me. Why is this all happening to me? What's going on? I'm confused. And that's exactly where you are. Now, a lot of people want this experience. It's the, the feeling of... It's freeing to kind of get that stuff off, but they use psychedelics in order to open that door, and it, it can open. Just bear in mind that if you've got a lot of stuff in there, you're you're literally saying, "I'm gonna take drugs so I can face monsters," and it's like, "Wow, dude! Like that's 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 chaos." It couldn't. It can work. It really can work. But uh, just know what you're doing. You know, mm. Jung would suggest more naturalistic approaches. Yeah, uh, even, and, and even, psych- right, even right now, I'll completely, like when people ask me, oh, should I do psychedelics? I don't even recommend psychedelics anymore because I've gotten stung. And yes, I recovered and yes, it was a positive experience for me, but it would be irresponsible for me to project my own experience because I know that not everyone yeah. has a happy ending with this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And, yeah. not, you know, you're not going to, it's going to be much less likely for you to do these practical, sustainable things and not have a psychotic breakdown. You know what I mean? Because psychedelics yeah. are freaking, uh, yeah. like you said, it opens up the door and it's freaking intense, man. It can be really intense. Yeah, and, and that's really the thing to think about. And I think if you have a good grounding in what we could call <laughs> sort of non-linear approaches towards psychology, <laughs> you, it can it can really help you with something like psychedelics. You can sort of say to yourself, oh, fuck, this is some dark energy coming up and maybe I can start drawing it for a while or something like that. Um, and then, as I said, MDMA can be a really, really useful thing. For example, if you know what you're doing, processing emotions, it's, these things all do sort of have relevancy and it's, it's something you could sort of consider in your in your toolbox of mental work whatever your type of doing whatever you're doing but but again the, the sort of story is like you, you asked about an archetype and I, I assume that Jung was painting this idea of the shadow to represent this thing it's like inside the wardrobe that you've chained up there's a fucking monster and you you're gonna have to face it if you want to fix yourself if you want to change your life you're gonna have to face it at some point you can't escape that and if you don't it will do this weird thing where it will tune you into all this heavy energy it's almost like it's sucking you towards it it has incredible power and it will change your personality towards that if you want to change yourself go towards that thing and then what he says in his opinion and what he experienced because he faced his own shadow he opened his narnia he felt that it all hit him Right. And then behind that, you go actually like, oh, so the clouds come out, the monster comes out, you feel like a child and then psh, the story ends. You you overcome the shadow or you integrate the shadow a little bit or something like that. Mm. And then like, you know, the, the, the music dies down, the, the, the dust settles and it's, you're just sitting there and all the energy is gone. The shadow has gone. You finally accepted. I, I took someone's life. Life is a very, very tragic place. I finally accepted. Um, I, I'm, I was scared. That's what was wrong. I was actually scared. I was scared of my mom. That's what it was. And then you, it, everything goes quiet and you look at the, the, the wardrobe and you see that, OK, it wasn't just a wardrobe. There's actually like a door behind it. And there's this like imaginative world, Narnia, you know, mm. and maybe that imaginative world, that place you can go where the dreams come from. Like maybe you maybe you can actually go and actually interact with it, like build a relationship with it, you know? You go into that magic world and think of it this way, like you you look at a film made by an artist and a film is almost like a super, a big dream, mm. you know? The artist 
sits there and he doesn't, the artist doesn't come and be like, this film is going to make you feel sad and happy so that you um, have a good experience and you come out. Like they just come in and they give you this very vivid, crazy story, unexplained with all these like colors and pictures and sounds. And it makes you feel all these big emotions. And then you come out of it and you're kind of like scratching your fucking noggin being like, what the hell just happened there? Why was that so good? You watch Harry Potter. You're like, how is that such a captivating story? You watch Lord of the Rings. It's like, how is that so captivating? Mm. What's going on? It's almost like this part of your mind, the dream mind, the fantasy mind, the mind that we have denied, the mind where we store all our bad memories. This part of your mind is the vivid thing that fills your life with energy and meaning and life. And it animates your life. It adds color to your life. And maybe this is what Jung was trying to talk about when he talks about the quote unquote, the anima, you know, when he talks about that archetype, right? He's sort of suggesting that in this, uh, behind the shadow, inside the little box, there is the magic world. And you actually are a magician as well. You are like little Harry Potter. You're not a mogul. You're actually someone who, if you go in and you you learn what this part of your head is, you can create dreams too. You can move people too. And again, a very, very practical sense, you know, any writer should definitely take this stuff somewhat serious, explore it in some way, Mm. and try to go into this part of their head. 